Hi everyone, I'm Zuyang Liu, a PhD student from Photonics Research Group of Ghent University and IMAC. Today I'm here to present our experimental study of waveguide-enhanced Raman spectroscopy using tantalum pentaoxide slot waveguides. This is jointly done with the University of California, Santa Barbara. The first important question is, why are we interested in Raman spectroscopy? Here we have a molecule to be measured, and in this case, ethanol. There is a monochromatic pump running towards it. In the scattered light, some photons will have a frequency shift as they have interacted with the molecule's vibrational modes. Some photons lose energy to the molecule to excite a certain vibrational mode and result in a Stokes shift. Because the vibrational modes are closely related to the molecular structure, the shape of this spectrum is like a fingerprint of each type of molecule. Raman spectroscopy in that case offers excellent specificity. This is also a label-free technique that is easy to use. However, there are also some drawbacks. For example, usually only one out of 10 million photons undergoes Raman scattering. This extremely weak signal has driven people towards high power lasers and cooled detectors, making the equipment very bulky and difficult to be carried around. What we are looking for is a miniaturized solution of Raman spectroscopy. Waveguide enhanced Raman spectroscopy in that case, among many other approaches, has caught our eyes. Basically, we need a photonic waveguide, which is covered with a bulk analyte. Could be liquid, could be gas. The excited mode in the waveguide will have evanescent field in the cladding. The evanescent field in the top cladding interacts with analyte molecules, excites the Raman signal, and couples it back to the waveguide. Then we can collect the Raman signal from both ends of the waveguide. It has already been proved that with this tight confinement of light and extended interaction volume, only several millimeters of silicon nitride waveguide can already outperform the conventional confocal Raman microscope. We can also integrate this extended waveguide with other on-chip components, such as on-chip spectrometers and filters. Then we can realize an integrated Raman sensor that is sensitive, compact, cost-efficient, and even disposable that opens the gate to many possible applications. One important factor in waveguide enhanced Raman spectroscopy is the waveguide platform. Currently, we're using silicon nitride, but we're also looking into several other platforms. In this previous study in our group, we have looked into four different platforms, including alumina, nitride, tantala, and titania. In general, for evanescent sensing, higher index contrast means stronger signal because there is stronger evanescent field. In that sense, titania has the highest refractive index. But there is another factor in the play, the Raman background. This Raman spectra you're looking at are obtained with four different waveguides made of these different materials. With air cladding, no analyte on top. So the spectral features you're seeing come from the waveguide material themselves and are intrinsic to it. Unfortunately, as you can see from this black line here, Titania has a huge Raman background that strongly limits its potential of detection limit. So we turn to the second highest index, Tantala. You can see from the green line here, despite of this signature peak, it is comparable to silicon nitride, especially above 1,000 newer centimeter. If one is looking for some biological and pharmaceutical relevant molecules, the fingerprint spectrum usually appears above 1,000 newer centimeter. Therefore, with high index contrast and low Raman background, Tantala became very interesting for us. Another key role in the play is the waveguide geometry. In this study done at MIT, the authors have compared three different geometries for evanescent sensing, being strip waveguide, slot waveguide, and sub-wavelength screening. 
For slot waveguides, most of the electric field is confined in the slot area, that is to say, in the top cladding. So the Raman gain coefficient is the highest for slot waveguides. And because there is a little bit more interaction with the rough sidewalls, the scattering loss is also slightly higher. But putting the gain and loss together, the figure of merits is still the highest for slot waveguides. These numbers were computed for SOI waveguides, but the conclusion applies to other platforms as well. So putting Tantala and slot waveguides together, we designed some waveguides. And here is the electric field distribution simulated on a cross section of such a waveguide. We designed the hut to be 400 nanometer. In principle, higher slot waveguide means stronger signal. But in practice, the thickness of tantala layer is limited, usually by stress. And 400 nanometer is the highest available for us. Then we get some waveguides fabricated together with UCSB. They have successfully demonstrated low loss tantala strip waveguides already. And here's a new technical challenge for them. This is the SEM picture on one of the waveguides. The yellowish part is tantala and the bluish part is oxide. You can see there's quite some overarching into the oxide because of this very narrow slot. In this picture, the slot width is about 67 nanometer, making the ion isentropic etching inside the slot a bit more difficult than outside. So if we want this nice slope inside the slot, this overarching became inevitable. Anyway, then we try to estimate the performance of this waveguides before actually measuring it. The signal intensity is related to the pump power by the molecular density of analyte rho, the waveguide lens, the Raman cross section, the conversion efficiency, and the loss of the waveguide. Conversion efficiency in this case is closely related to waveguide geometry. It is uniquely defined by the electric field distribution on waveguide cross section. Basically, it quantifies how much electric field is in the top cladding compared to the entire electric field. Here is the numerically estimated conversion efficiency for all the waveguides we have fabricated with slot width from 40 to 150 nanometer and rear width from 100 to 200 nanometer. The optimal geometry is here where the rear width is 120 nanometer and the slot width is 50 nanometer. And the estimated conversion efficiency is 1.2, five times higher than the silicon nitride waveguide we're using right now, fabricated with DPV lithography. Then we measured this waveguide. The waveguide background is already removed from this spectra. They are measured with 50% ethanol as bulk analyze on top of the waveguide. This orange curve is obtained with the optimal tantala waveguide in practice. The dimensions are listed here with a head of 400 nanometer, a real width of 120 nanometer, and a slot width of 90 nanometer. The slot width is slightly different from simulation. The signal intensity is about five times higher than the nitride waveguide. So we have realized five times signal improvement compared to the conventional silicon nitride slot waveguide. But if we look back at the simulation, the conversion efficiency should be about four times higher. This difference could be due to a distinct difference of waveguide losses between these two waveguides. This is still something under investigation. Then we try to compare the simulated conversion efficiency to the actual value derived from signal intensity. If there is a good agreement between the simulation and the measurement, it means we can directly estimate the signal intensity before fabrication, even without comparing to a reference, like in the previous slide, to a nitride waveguide. To derive the conversion efficiency from signal intensity, we need to know the pump power, the uh, molecular density of analyte, the waveguide lens, the Raman cross section, and the total loss of the waveguide. The total loss of the waveguide usually can be measured in transmission, but this high aspect ratio and cladded waveguides became gradually damaged during the extensive measurement, up to a point where it cannot be measured in the initial condition anymore.
So we then turned to simulation. We numerically estimated the loss of the waveguide from the sidewall roughness and estimated the coupling loss from experience. Using this numerically estimated loss, we tried to compare the conversion efficiency of all the waveguides in this parameter space. However, only the waveguides with 120 nanometer reels were more intact. So we only managed to compare for this group of waveguides. And the results are shown in this figure. The blue dashed line are the simulated conversion efficiency and the orange dots are the derived conversion efficiency for measurement. You can see that the high values of the measured conversion efficiency roughly follows the simulation and follows the tendency, but there are also some low points that could be due to an underestimation of loss. That is to say, um, these waveguides were probably a little bit damaged when measuring the Raman signal, so the signal was not as high as in the perfect condition, but then we estimated the loss in the perfect condition, which is lower than actual values. Anyway, there is still some matching between the simulation and measurement, and we are working on a new sample together with UCSB to further explore the potential of Tantala to confirm the signal enhancement and to make a better estimation of losses. In conclusion, we are particularly interested in Tantala slot waveguides for on-chip Raman spectroscopy because one, it has high index contrast, and two, it has low Raman background. With Tantala slot waveguide, we have realized five times stronger signal compared to nitride slot waveguide that we are currently using. We tried to do a mapping between the simulation and the experiment of conversion efficiency, but due to this very rough estimation of waveguide losses, is there's only some rough matching. We're still working on a new sample to help make the estimation better. In the words, we have made another step forward to a more sensitive and compact Raman sensor. That is all from me today. Thank you for your attention.